And the gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 and 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent the priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He said, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. May God add his blessing to the hearing and understanding of his word. Amen. Anybody willing to pray for the preacher this morning? I have a prayer for the preacher. Let us pray. As we move closer to the time of your renewal of the Christmas miracle, Lord, may our hearts, minds, and spirits turn to find you in the world around us. May you guide and care for Pastor Terry as only you are able. Help her to have strength and the conviction to tell the story as it needs to be heard. Give her strength for everyday living that may glorify you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Toby. Dum da da dum 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 da da dum 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 da da dum 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 da da dum 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 da 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 how many of you know what that is or recognize the tune? Never heard it before? My goodness, it's called Vakadoth, which means sleepers wake. It is a traditional first Sunday of Advent hymn. And actually, I had an organist who tried it every first Sunday of Advent for three years when she was my organist in Frederick. Nancy Mullins, and I'm sorry I'm not asking your name. If she looks at this, she's going to say, thank you, Terry, for sharing my shame. Because she would get that far in the song, and then it goes into two different sort of melodies, one on each hand. And she would start to turn pink in her cheeks, and then she turned bright red, and then tears would start to come out her eyes, and she would just totally tank every single advent. By the third year, I said to her, why do you put yourself through this every year, girl? She said, because advent is the season of hope. And I hope every year I'm going to be able to get through this piece of music. That's some faith there, right? If you want to keep trying. Now, we've talked about hope. We talked about hope in the Hebrew sense of the word. The first one being yakal, meaning patience, just waiting, 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 waiting. We talked about things we wait for. Then the next week we talked about kava, which comes tikva, which is the hope that is the the Israeli national anthem is Tikva, the hope. That's hoping with the, the idea that something's going to change, expectancy. And we talked about Mary gestating the baby Jesus. And this morning we read a little bit about what it is to be in labor pains this morning in the Romans passage. But also we talked about what else last week? We talked about how sometimes hope happens because we hope and sometimes it doesn't, but it's powerful. And this week we're gonna talk about the Greek word for hope, which is el peace. Frida must look that one up because she pronounced it perfectly. El peace, the hope that is certain in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're, we have certain and sure hope of things in Christ Jesus our Lord, don't we? Don't we? 
Do we? Do we? Do we? What are, we what are you hopeful for? What do you know is going to happen in Christ? I asked you the first week, what are you waiting for? What are you hoping for? What are you expecting is going to happen? What do you, are you certain is going to happen? Anybody? Teresa, what are you certain is going to happen? We'll be with Jesus one day. Amen. Anybody else certain of that? Say amen if you're certain of that. You're going to be with Christ one day. Christ is coming back. Okay. Oh, it scared me for a moment. Now, Jeremiah, I picked this one this morning because it has nothing to do with the words yakal or tikva or kava. It's not mentioned there, but this is, the, this is hope, isn't it? Now, sometimes when we say we have a, a reading from the Hebrew Bible, I see all glaze over like, what am I going to have for lunch this afternoon? Especially when it's all these names and words, and Toby did a great job with those this morning. Now, at the first service, nobody was prepared to read, and Carrie decided she was going to read that, and she just said, oh, my goodness, when she got to those words. The King Zedekiah has Jeremiah where? Let me test you, see if you remember what happened in that passage that you've heard about, oh, 90 seconds ago. Where was, where was Jeremiah? Where did Zedekiah have him? Zedekiah was the, the king of Judah, the southern kingdom, and where does he have Jeremiah? And eh, locked up. He's in jail inside the palace because the armies of what? Are Babylon. Very good. Somebody got that one. Armies of Babylon are closing in on them. The city is surrounded. It's besieged. It's getting ready to fall. And Jeremiah says, God wants you to be taken into exile. And the king does not like that, does he? I told you before, prophets are not always looked upon with favor because they never have something good to say, do they? They don't come to a party and say, let's have a drink. They come and say, oh, you're all in trouble now because God's going to let you reap what you've sown. And that's what happens here because Jeremiah's been warning the people about their stubbornness, warning them about their apostasy, warning them about their sin. They just don't want to listen because they're a, they're a mighty nation now. They want, to, they want to just go out into the world and act like another nation. And God is so fed up that God says they're going to finally get taken into exile. Nebuchadnezzar's army has surrounded the city, and so if you can't shut up the prophet, you shut him up in the cell. He's locked up inside, and what does he say? God is going to let you be carried out of your land into this other land. They don't want to hear that. But then what does he do? Do you remember what he does? God says, I want you to go out and buy some property. Where? Ground zero. It'd be like me saying, I think I'm going to buy a place in Gaza, a nice summer house in Gaza right now. What would you think if I said that? You'd think I'd lost my mind, wouldn't you? Or a place where there's been a fire or a flood or a famine or something that's destroyed the city completely, and I'd say, that's where I want to build my house. And he buys it from his cousin because he has the right of succession, which means he has the right to buy this piece of property, and he has sort of the obligation to buy it from his cousin. I'm sure his cousin's like, I'm happy to unload this. This is not, this is not some future thing like saying, oh, buy while it's cheap and sell it while it's expensive. No, 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 no. This is not in those, we're thinking that way. But this is the land that's being taken from the people. He is told to buy property there. And he's told to put the, the deed of property where? In a jar. Why? Why did you put something in a jar in those days, 2000, 3000? Preservation. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found still intact in a jar. Because what's going to happen in the future? God's going to redeem the land and the people. And that's a sign. That is hope incarnate. That is hope made real. Because Jeremiah says, what's he say here? After I'd given the deed of purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed to the Lord, saying, Ah, Lord God, it is you who made the heavens and the earth by the great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Say that one with me. Nothing is too hard for you. That's what the angel said to Mary last week. Isn't it for God nothing is impossible? Nothing is too hard for you. Say that again. Nothing is too hard for you. I want you to memorize that line because you're going to need that line in the world, aren't you? When you get a diagnosis, you're going to need to hear nothing is too hard for you. When you find out that someone you love is not going to make it, you say nothing is too hard for you. When you find out that you've lost your job or whatever, nothing is too hard for you. Whatever you face in life, God's there with you. God is with you. God is with us. That is the name of Emmanuel. So, what do we do with all this, huh? We baptized a baby this morning, which is the best sign of hope I've ever seen. Little 
little William Menon was up here, and she said he screams when he gets in the bath water, but God bless Susan, she heated the water in the microwave, and it was nice and warm, and he just sort of smiled when he was baptized. Like, oh, that feels good. That feels good. What a sign of hope to have people bring their infant son in the year 2023 to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, to take on the promise that they made, that they're going to raise him to know and love Jesus Christ in his church, so that one day he's able for himself to claim his baptismal promise that they made in his behalf. That's why I asked Rachel this morning when I said, creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, and hope that the creation itself will be set free from its enslavement to decay, obtain the freedom and the glory of children of God. We know that the whole of creation has been groaning together as it suffers together the pains of labor. I asked Rachel today, I said, did it hurt when he was born? She said, oh, yes. How many of you ever had a baby? You remember those pains? Oh, yeah. That's who we are right now. We're groaning for Christ to come into our lives. We're groaning for the time when he comes to redeem us and take us home and make us whole. And the gospel, you know, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. That's what you're all called to do, to be the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Because we feel like the wilderness is out there around us, don't we? Look at the world and the shape it's in. People say to me all the time, the world's worse now than it's ever been. I say, they crucified my Savior 2,000 years ago. I don't think it's much worse than that. But until Christ comes, we are his presence. We're his power. We're his peace in the world. Let me read to you what Stephen Charleston, I read some of his work last week to you. This is a man who is a Choctaw elder, also an Episcopal priest, also an Episcopal bishop, seminary professor. He says, Free your spirit from fear, for that sad old paper tiger was swept away before the rush of wind from the breath of life. What makes us whole is far more powerful than what seeks to divide us. One drop of hope can water a desert. One glimpse of vision can heal the blindness of thousands. Within you are all the great gifts of the sacred, the renewing force of your own faith, the strength of the peace you alone can release. What can stand against you? What can stop you? Nothing, cry the angels as they gather beside you, their bright eyes flashing with celestial joy. Free your spirit from fear, for eternity was, was the ground from which you were made, and love unending is the fire within your soul. Love unending is the fire within your soul. Here's the holy question of faith. He says we are as strong as what we hope. Now, we've looked at this poor lady up here all these weeks. She looks a little sad, doesn't she? But she's still playing. I'm telling you that. She may have one string left on her lyre, she may be blindfolded, but she's still playing and she's still listening to the song, however faint it is. If you're not hearing the song, you're not listening closely enough because God is singing it to you right now. The angels are singing to you right now the birth of Christ, which was and is and is to come. It's not just something that happened 2,000 years ago. I say every Sunday, this is not a baby shower for the Virgin Mary. This is the church's annual proclamation that Christ who came will come again and set us free. Now, some of you have heard I went to the neurologist this week. He was like, I was not great, not terrible, but not great. He thinks I have something called myasthenia gravis, which is an um, autoimmune disease that also has a neuromuscular component, which means I'm not going to probably get much better than this. I'm going to have trouble breathing, which means I'm going to have trouble preaching. I'm slowing myself down when I preach, because I know I start reading and I go really fast. I can't make myself stop. I try the best I can. I can't do it because my brain is telling my body is running out of air and I have to make it go faster. If you see me walking downhill, it's like that too, and that's really scary. But this is something that I may have to live with the rest of my life, and it may require me to retire from ministry earlier than I had hoped to. It may be something that keeps me from eating in the future. Oy vey because swallowing is a problem with this. I tend to aspirate when I eat things that are crunchy or have crumbs like cookies. Christmas cookies are going to be something I have to give up. Oy vey. There's a lot that's facing me in the future, but I know what else is facing me in the future. Jesus Christ will be there with me. I did that dum da da dum 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 for you, but this is the song that's been in my head all week. I'll praise my maker while I've breath. 
And when my voice is lost in death, praise shall employ my nobler powers. My days of praise shall ne'er be past, while life and thought and being lasts, for immortality endures. That's sort of antiquated language, but I've done that one all my life. As long as I'm living, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to proclaim Christ. As long as I can, I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep singing. I'm going to keep telling people that Jesus Christ is the answer to the world's problems. I'm going to inspire people as best I can. Somebody said to me one day, just you getting up every Sunday morning means something to me because I know it's hard for you to walk right now, and it is. I'm in pain a lot of the time, and it's getting to be to the point where it's very hard to continue to work but I'm not gonna give up until I have to give up. I may be leaving here probably in June this year because I might have to retire, but I'm gonna to continue to praise God and you're gonna to continue to praise God. Promise me that you will continue to praise God. You'll continue to work for Christ. Be the voice of someone crying out in the wilderness because God needs your voice. Even if it's as bad as mine right now, God needs your voice. God needs your love. God needs your hope to be exercised in this world because without hope, there is nothing we have but fear and darkness. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. John came to testify to the light, and Jesus came to say that we are the light in his name. So shine in the darkness. Please shine with all that you have, with all that you are, because Christ needs to be made known. You know him. Share him with all that you have in you, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and your strength. And Christ will be made known. Amen, amen, amen.